Hi, and good morning. Welcome to Grey Roots Museum and Archives. I'm Laura, I'm the Programs Coordinator here at Grey Roots, and I'm so glad you could join us for our third um, in our series of Made By Me kits, the Inky Octopus. And we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping uh, of a talk before we get started. So if you're participating live with Zoom, just remember to mute your microphone and your camera. If you have any questions at all, you can just put them into the chat box. We'll be monitoring it and we can get to them through the experience. And if you're watching the recording of this and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with any of the questions you have about this kit. So like tie-dye, if you joined us last week with tie-dye, dyeing with Kool-Aid is always something that I really enjoy. So this activity was actually adapted from a blog called The Craft Site. And with it, it started with yarn. And because, like I said, I like dyeing with Kool-Aid, I thought, why don't we start with some white wool yarn and then everyone can dye their yarn if they would like to create a multicolored, multi-layered octopus. So if you are choosing to dye, um, I dyed mine, you'll see in just a minute, in the oven. So I have this wonderful pan for crafting that we have here at Grey Roots. I just soaked the yarn because I should also mention, if your yarn looks like this um, in your kit, you just need to get it nice and loose but organized. So all I did for to take this ball to make it flat, I just wrapped it around my arm and then I set it in here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna add some warm, not hot water, pour it on top, let it soak in and you can add a splash of vinegar. Technically you don't need to add the vinegar because of the way that the Kool-Aid is, which is slightly disturbing when you think about it because we drink it, but you can just add a splash just for extra, um, color grab and then you just let it soak and you'll actually see that the yarn it'll start to look wet now one of the most important things with yarn especially wool and other natural fibers is if you start if you act rough with it while it's wet it's going to make it felted and that's not what we want for this craft so just be very gentle when you have it soaked for a bit. It didn't take that long. It only took about 10 minutes until I felt it was good. You just kind of drain the water out and then you're gonna take your colors of Kool-Aid. If you have gloves or you have tools like forks or tongs that you could use, they could help you if you need to turn the dye. So when I dyed mine, I sprinkled one color on the side of the yarn and then I carefully with gloves flipped it over because again it will dye and then I sprinkled the other color on the back side and then I covered it with some foil and then I stuck it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes and there are also other instructions included in your kit for doing it in the microwave or with a non-metal setup um, or a slow cooker or crock pot. It's totally up to you how you do it or if you even do it. Now, the other step that you'll need to once the yarn is done dyeing, if you chose to dye, you let it cool down. Again, you don't wanna agitate it too much or it'll make it all felted and not very easy to handle for your octopus. You're going to rinse it out gently with cool water and then leave it to dry. And again, because it's dye, if you can use gloves or other tools to handle the yarn while it's wet and potentially my hands kind of did get a little red when I was doing mine, but just be very, very careful and think about what clothes you're wearing just in case it spills um, or gets on you. So that is the very important thing, but let it dry. And then when you are ready, you need to wrap it or find something rather that's about 15 inches or 38 centimeters um, around my house uh, on the website they suggested finding a chair but none of my chairs in my house fit um, but i use for my very first octopus i used the back of this child's um, stove 
But this time, I use, this is just a canvas I had um, borrowed from one of my kids' rooms, and it is 16 inches or 41 centimeters wide, and then you're just gonna wrap everything all around. So you're gonna end up with quite a bit of yarn, and we are going to move to the next step, but first, we, spoke with our collections department and our wonderful collection summers assistant jacob found a really interesting artifact from our collection and he wanted to share it with you it's related to this week's craft and so i'm very excited for you to see it so we're going to go and visit jacob in the collections hello everyone my name is jacob fralick a summer student at gray roots museum and archives and this is our collections room. Today, I will be talking about this fish fossil, one of the artifacts in our collection. Now, this fossil is of a capelin, a fish also known as Melotis velosus. While we do not know the exact area this fish fossil came from, it was most likely around Ottawa, dating back to the Pleistocene and Holocene periods, around 11,700 years ago. While this fossil may be around that old, the capelin actually still exists today living in the areas around Atlantic Canada. This fossil is very well preserved, as you can see, with the full details of its fins and backbone being apparent. I, in particular, very much like this artifact due to my background in paleontology before studying archaeology. That's all I have to say for today, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much, Jacob, for sharing that amazing fossil. It was very interesting with all the details of the fish. So now that we saw a very, very old fish, we're going to work on a very, very brand new octopus for yourself. So I was able to remove the yarn um, from that canvas that I had, and I cut 10, 15, inch or 38 centimeter length of yarn and I need 10 specifically because I need a top knot, the neck, and then an octopus has eight tentacles. So we need those and because I dyed mine and I wanted it dyed, um, I cut it after the dyeing was done. But if you wanted to make the color pop, you can always just cut them before you dye so that the white stands out. Whatever kind of look you want. You can even use ribbons if you have ribbons around your house that you want to use. Whatever you want because this is your octopus and each octopus is going to look very different. So once you have your lengths in your loop, I'm going to make sure mine's nice and neat because apparently I play with this too much. I am going to add one of those strings to the very, very top. Now, something that happened quite a bit um, when I was doing this with my tester, and it shouldn't happen because this yarn is different than what I tested with, but that wasn't what happened. But one of the things that did happen, it was, was very slippery. So don't pull as tight as I was pulling but be, tie it tight enough. If you have someone nearby that can help you by holding their finger down, um, kind of like if you're wrapping a present, you can do it that way as well. And you want to have, it's about one to two inches. So that's about um, three to six centimeters of height for your hair. Mine's gonna be a little bit longer. I did not tie that tight enough at all. But I don't suggest doing any trimming until you're absolutely done. Um, and it's the same thing with um, Wednesday's craft with the yarn birds. It's always nice to make sure everything looks nice and neat at the end before you do any trimming. So I have that top knot now and I have my nice wooden ball a two inch ball and it's going to go just right underneath that knot and then we're going to hide it 
with the yarn. This is very easy to hide because there's so much yarn, which is lovely. Um, the first time I did the craft, I had chunkier yarn um, that I had happened to dye um, with Kool-Aid at home. And it was a lot harder to work with than this thinner stuff. So you're gonna tie, get another one of those pieces of yarn that were cut and you're just going to tie it underneath for the neck to create that head shape. And I'm not really happy about this piece and they happen. Um, so all I'm going to do is look if I can see where it's pulling from. Can take patience and of course because I want to find it. I'm not going to. No. So all you're going to do is kind of just pull. I'm getting close. There we go. And you're going to find it, and then you're just going to pull and tighten it. So that's the other thing when I said like wait till the trimming's done the end because you never want, know when things like that are going to happen. So now that I have my head, my hair, you can cut the loops for your hair if you want. I'm still gonna wait till the very end because I just wanna see what kind of a character or a personality my octopus is going to have. Now, I'm gonna shake this out because I need to cut all of these loops so that we can divide them. But I did a little bit of a trick because I wanted to make it as easy as possible because what you want to do is divide it, all of your yarn in half. And if we already have it divided in half when we wrap it around whatever item around your house that you found to wrap it around, if we can do it like that, we can automatically divide it in half. So I'm going to protect one of my halves and let the other one flop down. So now that I have my two halves, oh, make sure everybody's trimmed. It should be evenly divided. And if you like to make sure things are nice and neat, you can do that. You get to do this at your own speed. And one of the great things about this activity too is if you're going camping or you have something that you want to just do outside, you can do this craft outside no problem. So I'm just going to finger comb this and then with this other side I'm just going to tie it up to get it out of the way so that it keeps it nice and neat for when I need to divide it. And so if I was really thinking, I would know exactly how many yarns were in this, but I don't. So very quickly, you just divide each half because half of eight is four. You need to get four groups. And I like to count out my groups, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna quickly do it. So I have my four groups. What I'm going to do to keep those separate, especially if you have counted these, you want to make sure you keep track of the groups. I'm going to wrap those around with the clothespins, just so I don't make a huge mess when I'm working on my braids. Braiding is a lot of fun. I know I learned when I was young in Girl Guides using rope licorice. Um, so we made an edible braid, but I think this is a great way to do braiding as well. So you're going to keep that head away from you. And if you have problems working with your braiding, you can always ask someone to hold on to the head while you braid. But you're just going to go back and forth and braid 
Now, if you haven't learned how to breathe yet, um, when I send out the email about the recording for this video, I will make sure I include a link to another um, YouTube video about braiding. But you're just going back and forth. And if you know like a fancier braid or if you have a different idea, you can even just knot these. Um, you can just make them long and loose, totally up to you. But you can really see the different dye colors come out. Um, when I dyed mine, I had a pink lemonade and then I think it was a fruit punch. And so there you go. So once I get close to the end, I'm gonna go as far as I can. And then I'm going to use one of those pieces of yarn I pre-cut and I'm going to tie it tight, not once but twice, and then leave it and then I'll move on to the next ones. So you're going to get eight in total um, and when you are finished that part, you can clean up all of your ends. Because the different thicknesses of yarn, uh, I'm not going to cut mine yet just because I know I have to regroup to make it nice and neat. But you can all make this however you would want. Um, you can make it have, it could be a pirate octopus, it could have a peg leg. Um, you can create that however you want. In your kit, um, you should have been given a piece of felt. Um, I grabbed one piece and, oh, you also were given beads. You can sew these on, you can glue them on. I, I somewhat I don't like the beads. I like the beads um, because one of the great things, if you do sew them on, you have to avoid the wooden ball, but there's lots of yarn that you could easily sew them on. I was thinking about something a little bit different. Um, I had some paint leftovers, so I made some eyes um, using just acrylic paint. They still need to dry. Or I also like sequins. You can even just skip the felt completely and just put sequins on. Um, whatever kind of attitude or personality you think your octopus has. Um, I even had a little bit of felt left. I can make like a little bow tie or it could be a hair bow, whatever you want. If you have extra supplies lying around, you can use them, just make sure you ask. Um, I can glue these on. If you are giving this to a gift to like a little baby or something like that, skip the eyes and added things. Um, but if it's just gonna be a nice, fun octopus for your room or for a gift, you can add the eyes and you could even add different details, whatever you want, because again, this is your octopus. Um, I'm really interested to see how your dye turns out if you choose to dye. Um, there's a lot of information online about dyeing with Kool-Aid. Um, when I was much younger, people would dye their hair with Kool-Aid. Um, it's a little bit harder to get the Kool-Aid in the packages now, the dry Kool-Aid. Um, it's a special, I can find it on Amazon, luckily, just not the prices it used to be in the grocery store. But it does have to be the powdered, um, unsweetened Kool-Aid that will do the dyeing. The liquid doesn't do the same thing. Um, so you want the unsweetened, it's not officially sold in Canada anymore, um, but like I said, I can find it on Amazon and there's some other specialty websites out there that do it as well. But it was just, it's such an interesting dying experience, but it also will make each of our octopuses that much more unique. Um, and so we're going to pop over and see if anyone has any questions um, as we wrap up. And 
there are no questions, but again, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me here at Grey Roots. Um, you can contact me at programs at greyroots.com or if you're using the kit program on our webpage about the kits, my contact information is at the bottom. I am so happy you are here and I'm so happy that you were able to join us. So if you complete the activity and you want to show off your Inky Octopus, you're welcome to email me a picture or you can post it online and just tag Grey Roots or tag, um, you can use the hashtag MBM for Made By Me, Grey Roots. So thank you again for joining us and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.